Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Republic to the Republic of the United States. Under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That's a good thing to note that. Did you see the changes that in February? Okay, the first item is approval of the agenda. Is we'll make a motion to approve the agenda. I'll second it. Discussion. Mileage. Okay. Um, you have on your desk, I believe, the um, normal mileage form that we have to fill out for the state. According to Karen, uh, it didn't get into the packet, but it's the same. Nothing has changed. So is there an amendment to add the mileage form, mileage certification? Uh, so moved. So moved. Is there a second? Second. And a second. All those in favor of the amended motion indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay, motion passes. Moving on to... Approval of the minutes, 124, 2022. Is there a motion? We'll make a motion to approve the minutes of 124, 2022. A second. And a second. Discussion. Dick, you got anything? No? Good. You're good, Bob? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I guess I had it all in order here. Hey, Bob, go ahead. Wait a minute. No, no, it's okay. You're it's, okay. Yeah, there was nothing serious. Okay. All right. Couple Joe? Punctuation. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, I, I don't think that Zach Holtzworth attended the meeting, but uh, the Zoom account that was being used for the meeting uh, was in his name. So I think he should be deleted. Um, that's it. Good. All those uh, in favor of approving the motion? Get the correct. I got. I got one thing. Okay, I'll come back. Uh, on. Page three or four. It says. Yep. Um, I just need a little clarification. Third paragraph down. It says Jane and Larry Nickaw visited. It appears he needs to do some research for land use and zoning. Who, who is he? Well, what is that all about? That doesn't make any sense. That sentence. Jane and Larry. Jane and Larry Nicola visited. Is that your visitation with you, Mike Jones? For this meeting, I, no, I, I saw Jane and Larry this week. For, no, end of this, last is week. Last this is in the minutes of the 20th. Right, so. in, in, in reference to your manager's report. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, they, they did visit, um, and uh, Jonas is doing some um, research on the land use. And in your packets this week is that attorney, hiring that attorney to help us with that. Okay, so this should be, it appears he is, is Jonas, is that what it is? Yes, yes. Jonas. Administrator. Okay, need to do some research for land use. Okay, okay. Yep, I'm good. You're good, Bob? Yep. Anything else, anyone else? No. All those in favor of the motion with the corrections indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion approved. Citizens' comments or concerns, items not on the agenda. Jane? Jane yeah. Nicola. Do I have to give up and say it? Oh, just so we can hear you, Jane. Okay. Jane no, Nicola. Can you now come up here? I'll do it. Oh, okay. The microphone probably won't pick you up very well back there. Yeah, I've got one other issue that came up today. I'm sure you were aware of those. But anyway, um, Basically, you guys, well, I think most of you have been aware of the problems I've been having with my neighbors with my neighbor's dog, correct? Everybody's well aware of it. The dog, when it's out, it's supposed to be being muzzled, and I have been letting it go. Uh, I'll tell you the exact date. I have been an exceptionally good neighbor, but I've reached the end of my rope. Okay, the end of January, I think it was like the last Friday in January, the dog, I went outside to take my dog out my front door of my residence. The dog somehow got out of the house, 
did not come over to attack me, but wanted to, it almost went over the deck. Not muzzled, it was barking like it does, insanely. I knew exactly what the bark meant and it was gonna head my way and they went out of the house running and screaming. I let it go again. The dog, anytime it's out in the yard on the north side of the house, of their house, it sees my animals, it goes crazy. Now, we did have a pile of wood stacked to the north side of my dog. That's where we stacked our firewood while it was dry. It also blocked the dog's view of each other. Okay, today the dog warden visits me and issues me a ticket for my dog's barking unit. Now I have had it, Matt, I guess is the one that complained. This is a petty issue. I should not have to be bothered with this stuff. I am prepared to go and fight it again, but my dogs have been out maybe 20 minutes, maybe at most with this cold weather three times a day, unless I'm walking them directly out of my house. I've been very patient with these neighbors. I've had it with that dog. It's gonna get loose. It's gonna hurt someone, yeah, or my animals. And I'm the one that gets issued a ticket for my dog's barking. Now, it's already been proven my dogs are working dogs. They can bark 24-7 if they want, if they're out barking at animals or they feel threatened. I never leave my dogs out unless I am outside. I'm really tired of this. So I want something done with that animal. Like I said, it's more the paid people that own it, but I'm not going to live like this. I've been through enough stuff with safety issues in this town. This is the last straw of that. So I want somebody to do something about it. Comments? Uh, Mike? I heard this today from, from Pete. Uh, and he, I heard a conversation between Pete and um, Chris on the phone. So I, I found out about it today. Um, and, and Chris has been working with the police chief um, to help him through this process, learning how to deal with the issues and write the municipal ticket. So that's what I know about it was um, it's it's coming the the police chiefs um, got the complaint this is how I how I understood this and then he got in touch with the animal control officer to have him follow up on so right and now Jim you wrote the letter and sent it to me after that last meeting stating how the dog's supposed to be handled it's supposed to be muzzled at all times I've got a copy of it if you want to refresh your memory okay Watch yourself careful. Oh, yeah. careful Excuse me, Mike. Yes. Who's who's Chris you're talking about? Chris Forrest, the animal okay. control officer. Okay, you see what it states on there? Dogs supposed to be muzzled at all times? Yeah, that was uh, July 15, 2020. Right. Right. Okay. okay. Is it 2020 or was it 20? No, time flies. 2020. The dog still, they take it out on a leash. Okay. His mother does too. Right. Walk it up and down my property line just to show me it's not on the leash. Okay. And the dog is psychotic. I mean, it's not leash. It's not right, but it's not muzzled and it's supposed to be muzzled. I oh. keep letting this go. I've had it. Okay. Thank you, Jane. We'll, um, I'm, I'm sure it'll be investigated and we'll get back to you. Okay. Okay. Is that something Chris Forrest is supposed to follow up on, Mike? Like? I'm just asking. I don't know who's supposed to follow up. It'll be it'll be Chris under the mentorship and tutoring of Pete. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I mean I just want to make everybody aware that I have tried being a nice neighbor yet again, and I get these petty things that my dog barks, which they do bark. I'm not going to say they don't, but I never let them bark. No, accessible. And when they're you know keeping the chickens in while I'm out there, they're working dogs. They're allowed to bark. And it's never been for a long time. Like I said, my animals are not even out. So anyway, I just want something to take care of. I hope promptly. Okay, thank you, Jane. Any other uh, citizen comments, items are not, not on the agenda? There's nobody online. Pardon? There's nobody online. Nobody online. Okay, if not, then we'll move on. Presentation of public works, asset management plan to the select board by Chris Forey to the Department of Public Works Director. You there, Chris? I am, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. <clears throat> uh, so I'm assuming you have in your packets a copy of the slides. I'm not gonna go through the slides, but I wanna pitch, pitch something to the board. And my hope is that you will place it into the newly formed Public Works Committee. Um, so what this is, is a 
asset management plan. This one focuses on our equipment, uh, namely our prime movers. There's a slide in there that explains what a prime mover is um, and makes sense of that. My goal here is, is simple. Um, I really want to focus our efforts um, and gain a shared understanding and vision with everybody as to what our, <clears throat> what our way forward is um, for the public works department as a whole. Part of that is knowing who we are and what we have for capabilities. And if we lack any capabilities that the, the town thinks we should have. Um, that said, uh, I tried to pick a novel starting point and that starting point I decided to look at was our equipment um, and understand what we have, what condition it is in and where do we see it five or 10 years from now. Um, so really what I'm doing is I'm trying to take a strategic approach to looking at those questions and coming back with a understanding, a shared understanding of how do we get there and, and how do we achieve those milestones. Um, and ultimately, uh, as I said, I started with equipment, which is a small part of what, what I would call a strategic asset management plan that in a perfect world would be, uh, you know, cover the entire town. Um, not only public works, but the police department and the rec, rec department, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I'll really, what I'll do is I'll, I'll sum it up, um, you know, one of the things I hate doing and I know everybody else hates is when someone comes to you and says, I need a new piece of equipment uh, at the last minute. Um, in my mind, there should be no reason for that. And this is a way, maybe not the way, but a way to start a conversation and understand where, where we are at and where we wanna be eventually. Um, so it's a holistic look at that. And, you know, maybe I got 70% of the idea correct. Um, maybe I got less, but I would like to obviously talk about this and get some feedback um, and make it a discussion so that we could have a product that we have a, a uh, five to 10 year outlook on. Um, so we don't have surprises and that we can plan for things um, and resource them, uh, you know, effectively and rationally. So what I am asking is, is to use this as a starting point, put this into a committee um, so that we can gain that understanding and hopefully move forward um, as we see fit. Okay, thank you, Chris. Uh, questions from the board, comments? On the on the greater worth, Chris, are we going to do that in house? You've got labor, you've got rebuild transmission. Well, that you know, oh yeah, that <clears throat> that was for context only. So uh, I'll I'll take a step back and I'll I'll say what I did is I I took I took a quick snapshot of each piece of major equipment that we have the town has in the public works department. Um, and I kind of describe where we we're at, their age, what condition they're in, um, and, and you'll see and what the average lifespan of each piece of equipment is. And by that average lifespan, when we, when we think it needs to be replaced or uh, establishing a decision point as to um, a point in time where we should have the discussion of whether we're going to keep it or get a few more years out of that. Um, so really what I'm saying with the greater, uh, on that particular slide is, is yes, that, that equipment would be, or I'm sorry, that work would be done in-house. Um, but 
what I'm really saying is, is yeah, it's old, still works, still does the job. But if it did go at this time, that's what a transmission would cost. Okay. My other question was several, well, not several, three or four of these slide sheets out of the five or six. It says need to keep up on preventive maintenance. Is there an issue with us keeping up on preventive maintenance? No, there's not. So what I'm what I'm really doing, sir, is I'm highlighting the importance of preventive maintenance. Um, and just to go to the last slide, if you want to look at it, slide 14, you'll see an equipment maintenance equipment maintenance record. So this is a new form that we have implemented uh, with Bob Ward. Um, he is all on board with this, and what I'm really going to do with this is, is when we talk about a piece of equipment, I want to be able to tell you how much during that equipment's life cycle it has cost to keep on the road or within a, a specific period of time, let's say the past year, the past six months, or over its entire lifespan. Um, I just don't have any way to, if you ask me for that today, I have no way to give that to you. So I... I noted it as a deficiency, and and that is something. Um, this is our way of correcting that going forward. If that answers your question, sir. It, it does. It does. Thanks, Chris. Any other questions for Chris? Mike. I don't have answers, sir. No. Nick. Um, I did, but Bob pretty well covered it. Then. Okay. Joe, do you have any questions yes, for Chris? Uh, just, <clears throat> just a comment, Mr. Chairman. I think this is a, a terrific uh, proposal plan that Chris has brought to us. I think for the town to be able to uh, make decisions regarding intended needs or, or emerging needs, this really ought to be uh, disseminated across the other departments of the town, because uh, if we can we're only focusing on the needs of uh, the Department of Public Works and its equipment uh, and, and not considering what's emerging in other areas, I think we'll be uh, shortchanging the town. So I applaud this and I, I just uh, would urge the manager to urge other department heads to take similar approaches. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Um, I, I, that is, uh, a, a great segue into the, what I had to say, Joe. Um, I did talk to Chris when he presented this to me. Um, we know it's a deficiency across the whole town. And I had, I've had the conversation with the police uh, chief today, as a matter of fact, um, about sitting down and going through this. To, and we'll go, we'll, we will do it across all departments. And I, I asked Chris if he'd be willing to come in and, and assist with that. Um, and he, wholeheartedly agreed. And so it is something that we will do across all departments. And when I was talking with Chris, we talked about it with that holistic approach is, you know, our capital assets are our roads, our buildings, all, all of this stuff. It's not just vehicles. So um, we will move this thing forward um, using this kind of as a, a template to do that. Yeah. yeah. And Perfect. Mr. Chairman, if I may, it, this is a big, this is a big project, just getting all this data together. So what we're, you know, we're taking baby steps towards what's called a strategic plan. Um, and as Mike said, I'm more than happy to share my knowledge in that subject, subject field. Um, I think it would be good, but it's, it's something that's going to take a while. Um, I just feel that, especially these purchases, when we talk about $250,000 loaders and hundred thousand dollar vehicles these are huge investments um for the town and you know everybody expects a return on the investment what does that return on investment look like what is it uh how is it measured um these are things that you know help um you know help help uh help us say that you know, the money's well spent, right? So this is just the baby step towards it to a, to a broader plan. 
um, and it'll probably shake the tree on a few other few other um, things within the town, but um, all in good taste as well. So. Okay, anything else for Chris? If you're not, thank you very much, Chris, for your analysis. I'm sure we all appreciate it. Absolutely. This is awesome. Okay, moving on. Vote for fireworks. Mr. Town Manager, you're the fireworks man. So what you have in, in your packet um, was a kind of a shock uh, as far as a change to how North Star Fireworks is doing business. Um, now, when it's basically when it's the week, if you go the week prior to 4th of July and you go the week following 4th of July, their policy now is you have to do a minimum of $10,000 um, of fireworks, which were before we didn't have to do that. So this is certainly a, a unbudgeted um, change to how for us. Um, and there was a question, I think, on the, I think last meeting, I think Bob asked the question about why the, the budget the year prior was so low as compared to this year's. And, and that answer was, I hope I was able to answer that for you, but we didn't budget it because we had the, the year prior because with COVID, we didn't get to do the, we didn't shoot the fireworks off. Or we didn't have that event. So they, the North Star allowed us to carry those into the next year. So we didn't need to buy them into that next fiscal year. So I took it out of the budget with the caveat saying, we're gonna to to put it back in. Um, and so this year is the year it gets put back in. Um, but we don't budget $10,000. We budget 7,500. So to have the fireworks and have North Star be the ones that provide those and, and do the event, um, we're looking at 10 grand. And they, they are gonna give us the discount, the, the early bird discount, they'll hold that for us. Um, all that means is you get 10% more fireworks for your, for your dollar, so it's still $10,000. But, um, but this, this is, as I, I think I've explained before, is there's just, it's coming out of China. The, the plants over there were shut down and it's affecting supply and demand and, they're having even North Stars having problems getting some products, but if we want to have it, the months are on the Fourth of July weekend or the weekend before the weekend after, it's ten thousand dollars. If we do it outside of that time frame, we can order the minimum of seventy five hundred dollars. So the question to the board um, is, or the, the, the problem statement is going to be, we don't have it in the budget at this point. <clears throat> But if, the, if you want to me to push forward with having the celebration on Independence Day, we're going to have to find a way to pay for the extra money. Or we don't do it on Independence Day or the weekend prior to the weekend after. And I think I gave you a little bit of a, you know, there, there was um, the, the cap of the parade in the winter. We were going to do it a couple of years ago um, and hold the fireworks that weekend. Uh, or that that day, that evening, before the or after the parade, and um, so there's just an option. I don't I don't know if it's the the greatest uh, recommendation, but it's something that could be considered, and that would only cost. We'd only have to have seventy five hundred dollars um, as a minimum mortar versus the ten thousand. So I'm, I'm placing it out there right now, saying it's not in the budget. But if you directed me to um, tip the piggy bank upside down and shake it I, and to find the extra $2,500, um, I would certainly do that. Is there a motion? Mr. Uh, Chairman? Yes, Joe. I would move that we authorize the manager to uh, present this issue to the Lake Bombazine Association, uh, requesting a donation of $2,500 in order to hold the fireworks on or around July 4th, with the understanding that uh, without such a donation, we will hold the fireworks at a different time of year, presumably uh, in the winter. Is there a second? There's a second. Discussion? 
Yeah, well, I'm just a little confused. Mike, you said a minimum order of, you said 7,500. Is that what you said just now? If it's outside, if it's on Independence Day, that weekend of Independence Day, or the weekend prior to Independence Day, or the weekend following, it's a minimum of $10,000 for the order. Anywhere outside of those, that time frame, it would be 7,500. Okay, because this, this says 5,000 on my sheet. It says if it's out, held outside, I think is what it says. It, it, you, you, I, I apologize. You are correct. We spend 7,500. Their minimum order is 5,000. Oh, okay, okay. Order of 7, right, <coughs> we have 7,500 budget, so it's over the, but we meet the minimum of the 5,000. Okay. Thank you for saying that. So just so I'm clear, <laughs> we don't set these off ourselves. These guys come and do it? Correct. Okay. So that's where your time thing is. I was right. going to say, why we just order the fireworks now? We could order them now, but we still have, we get on their calendar and they, they're the ones that but, execute them. But they execute it. So if they execute it during that time period, it's 10 grand. Okay, all right. I understand. Or oh, you know, their minimum order still is ten thousand dollars. I I didn't ask her because we don't have licenses to do this. Oh. I didn't ask her if, if we pay ten if we order ten thousand dollars worth of fireworks, you know, and we're going to send them off ourselves. How does that in, in, impact everything? Because we don't have anybody licensed. Oh, okay. I didn't know if the firemen went up and did it or what they. No. Okay. So they come over and they do it. Okay. That's the shortage of help thing is in there. Yes. Okay. All right, I'm good, I'm good. Sure. Yeah, I know. Excuse me. Who, who seconded the motion? Hey, Richard Combs. Thank you. Okay. Any other uh, items for discussion on the fireworks and the motion that's on the table? Uh, is, is, is Mike going to reach out to the to the LBA? Okay. Yeah. And you'll be at the next meeting. You'll give us an answer. Or... Correct. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. Something else. All those in favor of the motion, indicate by saying aye. 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 Oh, motion passes. Thank you, Joe, for that recommendation. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome. Uh, moving on to liquor licenses. We have four different businesses that would like to renew their license. Uh, Peter has checked everything out, and there are no problems with any of these uh, businesses and their liquor license. So, you want to do them individually or do you like to do them as a group? No, as a group. <laughs> I think you're going to say as a group. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the liquor licenses as a group? As a group? <coughs> we'll make a motion that we approve the, um, I got three, these three liquor licenses as a group. Four. Four? Four. Four. Yeah. You can take them right off the agenda, Mike. Yes. Yeah, right oh, Okay. The four liquor licenses uh, Castle and Corners Deli, uh, Robo Creamies in General Store, American Leagues Crippenfells Post 50, and the Lake Bombazine Log. I'll second it. And a second. Discussion. Uh, discussion for clarity the BEJJ -E Incorporated DBA is Castle and Corners Deli is a second class renewal. Yep. Robo's Creamies in General Store LLC is a second class renewal. American Legion Crippens Fellow Post 50 is a first class, third class, and outside consumption renewal. And Lake Bombazine Lodge LLC is a first class, third class, and outside consumption renewal. I'm still sucking it. <laughs> I just wanted that in a minute. Absolutely. That's okay. It might be important for the business. I think it has to be. Yeah. <laughs> Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay, gotta do some signing, guys. I'll get it. I'll get it. Yeah, just leave it right there. Okay. Not that side. Squeeze them in there somehow. Okay. 
And I don't think so. Got three of them there, guys. How are you doing? Yeah, there's five of them that got multiple places at the time. Yeah, there should be three of them. Yeah, because I don't know all together. There's a big one. Let's put it there. Multiple places you said, Bob? Three yeah, out of yellow stickies. The oh. here, I think, is four, Bob. Okay, the yeah. ones that have uh, first, third, and outside, there should be three places you got to, or at least two places you got to sign. Could be three. Okay, can you count those? So I got two here for, oh, you got just two there? No, I got two three. for BEJ for Castle and Corner Deli. One is for second class, there's it's duplicates. I'm going to say we've got too many pieces of paper. This is probably just a copy. Didn't hurt anything to sign. No. We may have an extra copy here. We'll let the town clerk sort it out. Okay. We're not done yet. There's more to come. This one is... Uh, Lake Bound is being lodged. That should have three places as well. Yep. I think we have to figure it out by right now. Right? Oh my God. Mm -hmm. yeah, they all came in at the same time. I don't know. Thanks. Nick? I believe so, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Addition of an attorney to the approved list. Wilmington, Campbell, Beck, and Stacey. Professional counselors, Meryl Brett. Mike, do you have something on that? Um, I wrote a letter for us here. Yeah, I tried to explain it in the letter, and I just, I'd ask that if there's any questions within that letter, about the letter, I could answer it that way. And we could take the letter. Any questions from the board for Mike on, on this? Joe's question. Joe, you have a question? Yes, thank you. Uh, Mike, I, I, uh, I totally support the idea of adding an additional attorney or more to our list of approved attorneys. Um, I, I personally was inclined to recommend that we add Gary Kupfer. Uh, partly because of his uh, being local and also because based on my experiences with him, he seems to be responsive and competent. Um, so I, I have no objection to adding uh, Merrill Brent, Merrill Bent, excuse me, but um, 
am equally interested in uh, supporting the recommendation that we add Gary Kupfer. I don't know whether he is interested, frankly. Um, comments? Questions? I guess Joel has explained his position very clearly. I think he should be asked before we just go ahead and put him on the pardon. He should be asked before we just go ahead and put him on the, on the approved list. Okay. I would agree. Yeah, the only other question I have, this is probably a question for Joe, is uh, um, I only know that Mr. Kupfer is an attorney. I don't know what his field of expertise is, so perhaps you could help me with that. Well, I, I can't really uh, specify what his expertise is. I, I think he's been involved in a variety of cases that I've heard about. Uh, and I, I don't know that he would necessarily be the correct person, for example, to evaluate the question of the quarry, quarry property and its uses. But I do think for many of the cases that have come up before us, uh, he probably has competence to uh, give us some professional advice. Okay. Okay. Any other comments or questions? If not, is there a motion? So we need to have the motion include the firm name, is that correct? Correct. We'll make a motion we add to our approved attorney list, the firm Wilmington Campbell Pitt and Stanzi PC, comma Merrill Pitt, in particular for Merrill Pitt. A second it. I think I said that close enough, correct? Okay, any other discussion? Do you wish to include Gary Cooper in that or? No, no pass. that's a separate issue. Separate issue, okay. No separate problem. issue. All right, okay, all those in favor of the motion as presented, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, passed unanimously. Second question. I think it might be appropriate to either ask uh, I think it would be appropriate to have uh, the town manager ask Gary Cooper at some point in time if he would be here to help the town up from time to time. That makes sense to you, Mr. Mark? It does. Okay, is that a motion, Dick? No, it's just a request for the town manager to add that to his okay. list of things he has right. to do. Everybody comfortable with that? Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, let's move on then. <laughs> Signing of the loan paperwork for the loader. You have that, I believe, in your packet. That's to replace the loader, which we agreed upon at a previous meeting. The amount is $153,000. Did I get just two of these by mistake, or did everybody get two of these? I didn't get any. <laughs> you got dicks. There you go. <laughs> you want one of these? <laughs> I didn't know if there's any difference in them. No. Okay. Well, I thought it was odd. I didn't have anything about this in my packet, but I wasn't too worried about it because I knew that we'd already approved this. If not, is there a motion? I make a motion we approve the capital equipment note. In the for event. the interest of 2.35 percent on 153 thousand dollars. Like and a second discussion. Like, just so you're aware, there's more than one document there for your signatures. There's the, the resolution for the capital equipment borrowing and the tax certificate that has the place of the select board to sign uh, as well. Oh, okay. In addition to the cover document, which is the capital equipment loan, so there's at least three places where it's signed. Is that correct? Correct. I believe Jim has the original document. Yes, I believe I do. <laughs> Get it mixed up with the copies, you know. <laughs> Thank you, Dick. Don't do that. I got it. <laughs> Three places to sign. Does the motion include the three the three signatures that are necessary? Is that your intent? It, it can, yeah. Okay. We don't all have to sign this. 
Yeah, we do. Yeah, everybody has to sign. Everybody has to sign. Oh, yeah. so what are you talking about? Three signatures. Well, there's three different documents we have to sign. Oh, okay, three different documents. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we we'll include them all. Now, do I need to? That's what they are. If you want them, I don't know if I can begin to do that. Let's see. Here. Well, the first one is the resolution for capital equipment borrowing. That's the second okay. document, second page. Capital equipment borrowing resolution. Okay. Yeah. And then the tax certificate, capital equipment borrowing. And is there a third one, Mike? No. The original capital equipment, no. Okay. Okay. Three documents. okay. Capital equipment, no. All three documents. All second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hopefully she's got that, right, guys. <laughs> okay. Oh any, other, any other discussion on this? If not, all those in favor of signing all three documents indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion approved. Sorry, I took that one on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. There you go, Bob. Okay. <laughs> this won't take as long as signing the liquor license. Virtual meeting equipment includes installation and labor. You missed one. Pardon? Oh, okay. No, I'm sorry. You're right. Mm -hmm. right. I'm sorry. And, and to clarify, Mr. Chairman, yeah, sure. for the fire department community room. For the community room? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve the purchase of the Hardware and installation for conferencing solution with two cameras at the Castleton uh, Fire Department or the Castleton Emergency Response Building Community Room for an amount not to exceed six thousand four hundred ninety-three dollars from Vermont Digital. Yes. There's a second. I'll second. Discussion. Joe. I don't seem to have the 
It was in I the back that. Yeah, I got that, but I don't I don't have it in the original. All we have to do is approve this, right? We don't have to sign it. No, we don't have to. Okay. Joe's got a question. All right. All those in favor? No, Jim, Joe's, Joe's, Joe's got a question. I'm sorry, person. hold it. Jim's got a, Joe's got a question. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just two comments, and I, I offer these as a person participating remotely tonight. Uh, one is that, the, as I recall, when we are together in the room, uh, we end up having a look back behind us over our shoulders at the image of the audience. And I think it would be preferable to have the select board looking towards the physically present audience at an image of the virtual audience, if you understand what I'm driving at there. The other comment I would make is a small point, and that is the podium right now obscures two of the members of those sitting at the table, and that ought to be off center so that we can get a picture of everybody at the table, as well as whoever it is that comes to the podium to address the board. Okay. I'm not sure that that changes the specifications of the uh, order. I would hope it wouldn't, uh, but I do think especially the having the, the, the ability of the select board to look out into the audience of the physical present, present citizens, as well as the virtually present would be a really good idea. Sounds good. Good discussion. I'm not an expert on this, but that would tell me that we probably need two projectors and two screens and put one over there and one over there or okay. something along those lines. We're going to use television. That's what part of it. So okay. So you guys can see it on the television. There's right. no really place to project it here um, very well. So yeah. without shining into um, people's faces and everything else. So it's, uh, it's going to be the use of television. Okay. No, no. Any other questions on this? Do we have a motion on this? I think so. Because you're we didn't do it. Did we have a motion? Right? Oh yeah, we we have to we have to approve it certainly. We have to approve the expenditure. Yeah, Dick made the motion. I second it. Okay, and you, the amount is in there. The total. Yes. Well, right. Um, I think at the previous meeting, this was discussed about using the ARPA funds for for this project, um, and there's been nothing to talk about that because this is not budgeted normal. Uh, this was only to use the ARPA funding. So should I amend my motion to authorize the town manager to use ARPA funding? Or sure. Funding for this? Sure, you can. So I will amend my motion. Okay. To include that. To include the money comes from ARPA funding. All right. Okay. Is there is there is there a total on this day? Where did you get the total? Did you say a total? Well, I actually, um, I actually added up. My, my copy didn't have a total, so I added it up. Oh, okay. And that's and the total. Added those two numbers together, the high end of the installation, which was a range of. 630 to 840. And you add that, those three together, your worst case number is $6,493. $6,493. Okay. And it, it will come, Mr. Chairman, it will come in less than that. Um, Vermont Digital gave this quote to me. I didn't go out there and found all of this stuff um, at a less expensive, same, same stuff, just less expensive. I ran it past Vermont Digital again. So that's why I said it. it if you did not to exceed 6,493, I'm confident it'll come in under that uh, based on what I've already researched. About not to exceed. But just as long as it doesn't, if you guys, you know, you did not to exceed. So that's my motion or do those words. Yeah. Motion, you want to amend it again, Dick? No, I did. My motion, do those words. Okay. All right. Any other questions on this? If not, all those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion passed. Tax map, annual contract, Cartographic Associates Incorporated. I believe you had that in your packet. This is just our normal renewal. This isn't counting the extra stuff that I had talked to the board about, the mapping stuff that Jonas and Mary Jo wanted. This is just our normal um, renewal. Not including the extra stuff. This is budgeted, correct? This is budgeted, correct. Okay, now if everyone's had a chance to look at it, is there a motion? Make a motion we approve the tax map maintenance proposal. 
3,500 plus 15 dollars a parcel? No, we're not doing the 15 dollars. We're not doing so. It's a flat 3,500. Flat 3,500 dollars. Okay. That's what it is. Okay. I'll, sec I'll second it. And a second discussion. Can you just include who it, who it is? So the cardiographic uh, associates. Yeah. Yes. Cardiographic Associates Incorporated. Okay. Anything else on this, on this one? If not, all those in favor, indicate by saying aye. Right. Aye. 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 I just for my notes, I forgot. I didn't get right down who made the motion. Who seconded it? I, I made the motion. I don't know who seconded it. I seconded it. Right, thank you. There you go, Bob. Mm -hmm. There's only four spots on here, but that's good. Okay. Assignment of warning articles to the select board members for town meeting. I believe that in your packet and I'm sure anyone who wishes to talk with Mike prior to the meeting for more clarification, he'd be more than happy to meet with you or by phone or virtual. Any questions on this? Who's oh. gonna do yours, Mr. Laney? Who's gonna do your article? You voted against the budget, correct? I got well, I'm voted for it. I'm on here to do it. Okay. But once I had my say, that was it. Okay. So there's no, the question was, is there any, so there's no con, nobody has, I try to stay away from, if you're affiliated with an agency and, you know, those, those type of things. So there's no, nobody has any conflict of interest with anything that's on, even assigned. Or I don't think so. I it looks fine. Up. I will need to sit down with you at some point. I have a couple of things I want to make sure I understand totally. Other than that, if anybody needs to meet at night or wherever, if we're after work, something like this, I'm going to do it on the phone in 10 minutes. At least. Any other questions on this? I guess we've got our assignments. I don't know if we need approval of this. No. <laughs> okay. We, we've got it, and that's it. Okay, let's move on then. Uh, manager's report. Mr. Chairman, before we do that, what do you want to do the highway mileage? That's what I wondered. I have it right here. Do we want to do that now? Sure. Any... Just so Joe did not get a copy of that because um, it was given to us late today. This is my understanding is this is the same number that I had last year. Correct. And all you need is. Uh, our approval as a motion for to us to sign and agree with the certificate of highway mileage that we are ending February 10th, 2022. Is that correct? correct? So, could you repeat the, that wording? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm just kind of making it up in my mind right now, Allison. Hang on just a second. I guess I'm going to say that I want to make a motion that we will authorize or uh, uh, 
approve and sign the certificate of highway mileage for the town of Castleton in the year ending February 10th, 2022. It includes a total highway mileage of 76.715 miles. So second. And a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, hearing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 I abstain. There is one point on that that was, um, that doesn't account the 4.88 miles class four road mm -hmm. Could you repeat that, Mike? Doesn't include what? Well, let, let the board decide if they want to read. Okay. Let me amend my motion, please, Allison, before we, Mr. Chairman, with your permission. Um, okay, wait. But Joel already abstained from the vote, right? That's yeah. correct. Okay. Well, apparently I made a mistake. Uh, but I should have included the 4.88 miles of class four road in that total. So it would be somewhere over, just a little over 81 miles of road. I could do that. Well, you just say to or to improve 4.8 miles of class four. So well, the original the number was 767.15. 76.715 plus 4.88 of class four miles. Okay. Plus 4.88 miles of class four road. Yeah. And Mike agreed with that amendment? Yes. Okay. Now the manager's report. Did you vote? You okay, Allison? Did you vote? Yeah, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 And I've explained. Yeah, no abstained on that one, Allison. You okay now, Allison? Yeah, that's why I was asking about it, because he abstained before the vote, before the amendment. Okay. Want to do it again, boys? Sure. <laughs> I think we got it right now, but uh, let Joe and Allison rule on that. I think we're set. Okay. We're set. Okay. If not, then we'll move on to the manager's report. Mike, does everybody have a copy in, in front of them? Yes, I do. Um, so the, why, there's a meeting next week. Um, to this, the first meeting is at six o'clock to discuss the uh, pedestrian uh, accessibility scoping study um, that's here at the, this building. Um, they've, uh, they're ready to do four uh, alternatives, to present four alternatives to, to the select board. So that's, again, next week at 6 p.m. Um, there's going to be a campaign um, to go around and along the Main Street area and hand out flyers. We posted it on um, the town website and you know, we'll get we'll get the word out just so we can get max participation. So that's a week from tonight, the twenty first. Yes. Starting at six o'clock. Correct. Okay. Just want to make sure everybody knew that. So it's here, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. Um, bike and pedestrian grant. Um, I did receive the paperwork, um, the official award of the um, small, um, the bike and pedestrian um, small scale grant. That's for sidewalks from Castle and Corners to Parsons Hills area. Um, the next step on that I put in there is, is beginning to look at the easements and uh, highway access permits, the Vermont B Trends 1111 permit. Uh, so that's something that uh, I'm going to need to reach out to attorney to uh, help me with that. But that's, we got the final, or we get the, the actual approval in writing so that can move forward. And if things go well, um, my my uh, my goal is to have this before the select board in the end of March. So with all this this stuff done, to um, if the board wants to move forward, to putting out the bid. 
be nice to see that thing done this year. Uh, we don't have to go because we don't have to jump through all the hoops that we would under a pulse uh, scale uh, grant from VTrans. Makes it a little bit easier to get the project uh, going. So that's on page one. Uh, and let, any questions on those two things? Yeah, where where, where will we get the ninety two thousand dollars from? Mike? It's already budgeted. It's in it's in the um, sidewalk. Um, it's already been approved. Yeah, well, it's it's in the. Uh, I'll come we put forty five thousand dollars a year in okay. the uh, okay. sidewalk fund. Okay. Okay. Money in the reserve account. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any more questions? I'm on page two. The grants and aid. Um, I had to change that. Chris and I weren't able to meet, so we're going to meet on the 22nd um, to look at uh, what we're going to have to hit Barker Hill for that into the project. That's where we didn't finish the culvert last year. We have the culvert. We've already paid for it, so we want to get reimbursed to the grant um, for that culvert. It was like fifty six hundred dollars. Um, and uh, get the state, those road segments on Barker Hill complete. If we do that, I talked to Chris about it. Um, if we do the, the remaining segments on Barker Hill, the road's done. The, the road's fully in compliance with the standards. We have We have to meet requirements each year uh, starting next year. So um, it, that would be a good thing. Um, now number two on transfer station, um, I'm, I have to meet with with uh, Joe Rice and Chris to look to review, have them pitch a proposal to me. They want to somehow put some covers over the bins, and there's a couple of different courses of action they're going to brief to me, um, and then we settle through that. Then I come to the select board. Um, but the first step is to let them pitch it to me, Joe in particular, um, with Chris there to try to strengthen their case. Um, I'm on. I'm moving to page three. Uh, the house, household hazardous waste days are now posted on the town website uh, under the transfer station. So um, they're coming up in April. That's when the first day. The first date. No questions. I'm going to go on to um, page four. How many how many hazardous waste days are we having tonight? Three. Three. Uh, page four, um, under five, uh, paragraph five, the highway department. Uh, Chris Sporaker has really been diligent and working <clears throat> on trying to find a way to complete this project. It's a, it's becoming, it or became, not becoming, it became much more expensive than originally anticipated. So thinking outside the box, Chris and uh, Brent had uh, spoke to Josh Carvajal from Rivers and Streams to see if they could, instead of putting a concrete box culvert under that road, which was up to about $86,000 on the high end, um, with a, a metal squash culvert, which I would be cheaper. Um, it, will, it won't last as long, but it would certainly be less expensive. <clears throat> so they're working through that right now to get some prices on that. And Josh is gonna come up with a drawing because even even if we use a, a metal squash culvert, we still have to have the aquatic organism passage, baffles and stuff in there. So they're going to work through all this and be able to come back to me with a with a proposal in the cost because it got out of it got out of control. FEMA gave us basically thirty nine thousand dollars, and the concrete box culvert alone was eighty is eighty six. Uh, but th they didn't give us money for all that because it had to. They only he gave us money for the damage that was done to bring it back to pre-storm conditions. And uh, the, the box culvert was inside of that. No one, they, they said no, it wasn't damaged. But the wing walls are all damaged and it's gonna become a monumental uh, task to try to piece that thing back together. So many people have looked at this, gentlemen. So we, we weren't going on a wing and a prayer with this. We've had V-Trans, we've had um, engineers look at it, we've had contractors look at it. and. This is going to be monumental. The only thing we haven't done is we haven't reached out to VTrans um, with the railroad mine because um, that was built in like, like I forget what it was like 1907 or 1917 or something like that. Um, if you, I don't know if you remember that, Chris, but it's old. Let's put it that way. 
Um, and because it's all tied into that, that, uh, that trestle, whatever we do, we need to make sure that we're not causing damage to the, the abutments and the, the foundation for that. So um, that's something that we're going to look at reaching out to the trans and getting their, uh, getting their input. What, what we were hoping was they'd have some liability in this and that there'd be some money that could come our way uh, because of it. But we won't know that until we ask, but it is our, on our radar to do that. Mike, I don't have that report. Where, what, where are you on that project? What street? It's the FEMA. It's a South Street trestle, okay. and it's a FEMA. It's a night. It's a leftover project from April of two thousand nineteen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions on that, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Joe. Uh, is, is this a project that would? qualify for ARPA funds if we can't uh, finance it in any other way? Yes, it is, Joe. Thank you. Uh, any other questions on the trestle? All right. H5, uh, um, highway garage. Um, I think I, I, I told the board this, but I want to be sure. Um, this year, passive, every year they offer scholarships. Or a grant, I'm sorry, a grant, not a, not a scholarship, a grant. And it's $10,000, and the town has to pay 50% of that, so it's 5000 And you get $10,000 worth of, of stuff, but you only pay 5000 This year, they're paying for 100% of it, so $10,000 worth of stuff. Um, and that stuff is what they give us the money for is to look at the safety assessments that's been done by our loss consultant, Wade Monsieur, which uh, you've seen some of those in the past. Um, with that $10,000, everything that we've been, had deficiencies that they've, he's found, we'll have corrected. So uh, Justin um, put together uh, initial stuff and, and Chris Foraker did the stuff for Public Works. Um, I worked with the fire department. Um, so we've got a list of stuff to, to purchase. And the, the good news is that all the deficiencies that we've had for safety violations and stuff like that will be resolved uh, through this process. Um, under dispatching. So that's, that's just starting to really get legs and grow uh, this, what it might cost the towns and municipalities in the future for dispatching. And there's a meeting um, tomorrow that I'll be participating in and, and Pete's also participating. Uh, the, the state's trying to re, trying to throw some money at this to build some regional dispatch centers it's called PSAPs. And one of them will be in Rutland County. So there's been some initial conversations of where that might be located and the Rutland City Police Department is one of those locations because the Sheriff's Department no longer occupies the whole floor there. So uh, this is what, it, what the bottom, I'll give you the bottom line is once, if they build these, they use, they're going to use about $8 million to build them. They're going to keep about $3 million to fund the first year's uh, operating costs. But after that, it's going to be on the backs of the municipalities to pay those operating costs, which we at this point don't really know what they are. We heard upwards of eight hundred thousand dollars could be that number. Um, then there was talk about how to fund it, um, and the ca a county tax was on the table for discussion. And I've had some residents already call me about this, upset that we already pay for this through our taxes, and why are we having to get hit on it again? Um, Again, I, it hasn't really gone through its uh, approval. There's a process of whether and how they're going to move forward, um, but I will know, probably know more um, after the meeting tomorrow, and I'll keep sharing information with the board. Uh, and, and like I said, Pete's already involved in it. Any questions on um, dispatching? Just a quick thing, but there's probably someday in the future, there's at least five towns in Belton County dispatch through Washington County, New York. Well, I guess my question is, if we wind up, you know, the towns in Rutland County wind up having to share this pie, 
Will those five towns be expected to contribute to that or will they be exempt from that? That has it. Nothing's been discussed about that. I'm just bringing this up so that it hopefully will get discussed. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and what well, has been discussed that they have a, a better service through Washington County, New York, but Washington County has been approached before and they just don't have the ability to dispatch for more uh, at this point. Uh, but money talks, so who knows uh, where it'll go. I just want to let the board know that it's been sitting dormant for a while and it's, it's really starting to come alive right now. Um, public outreach. Um, did, I, did everybody get a copy of the email or a letter from Chief Mentallo? Yeah, so he's, he's uh, hosting and facilitating a community meeting um, in residents who are in the blasting zone of Camaro's Quarry and the owners of the quarry uh, and the owner of the quarry. Uh, that's scheduled for the 17th of February at 6 p.m. here in this room. And she's looking at about two hours uh, for that facilitating that meeting. And um, it, it all is it's complied with the uh, MSHA, the Mine Safety and Health Administration, and the Vermont Department of Public Safety's recommendations for notification and warning system. So that is uh, starting to, you know, Hopefully some of this stuff can be addressed that's going on. And um, Jonas did tell me he has a letter of violation drafted for for the uh, quarry, uh, like the $200 fine to the town. Who um, from the town government decided the chief minister was going to be at this meeting? I'm going to be there. But as far as, uh, you know, the select board, I, I, you guys just found out about it, so I haven't talked Yeah, there's a conflict with me and I also had the CDRP meeting the same night. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be next door. We moved it over to the town office. So they'd be very much interested in finding out to what there was more and what was discussed at this meeting. Um, I know that uh, I, I've had correspondence back and forth with the fire chief, and he is right into this as well. Um, I will verify, but I, I'm assuming. Um, he knows what's going on over that because it's in his neck of the woods too, but I'm not sure if he's going to be there. Uh, that's that just to me. I'll ask him. As long as somebody gets me up to speed, I appreciate it. I'll try to go when it's in I get. Pardon? I'm going to try to go from here. It's on Thursday, but next week. Well, this coming Thursday. This coming Thursday. Yeah, yeah I'll try to make that one. I should be able to make that. Okay. Yeah, it'd be great if you could catch me up when I'm going to be at a different meeting. Nope. Anybody have any questions on that? The folks were notified of this meeting, right? I yes. Okay. And I think it's about time the town does something. We're the state. I mean, there's plenty of laws that are supposed to protect us, but nothing has been done. And I'm telling you the truth, quite tired of it. But it must, my husband, by feet. And just so I can give you an idea, you're talking. Back to the dogs again. Here's my dog face. Does that show you the rock? It was a chunk of rock. It was embedded right in the fence, feet from where my husband was. And here's other stuff. That this rock hit the tree in the uh, eastern side of our property, broke off, hit the ground, flew. How far would you say? 40 feet, another 50 feet, then wedged that tightly into our fence. And then flew pieces of it, or it could have been other rock that landed. My husband had a duck and literally covered his head, and it went over his head, and landed right in front. So this is something the town on, had better addressed. Plus, on the eastern edge of our property, there's hundreds of pieces. Of people, yeah, there are pieces of uh, track on the road. I mean, that's a good sized chunk. Would you people like that landing in your yard, feet from your house by your doorway? And then we even had one piece that landed on the north side of the house right by our electric. So the electric comes into the house. That was a foot away from our foundation. I mean, this is serious. And this town has not addressed this since 2003 when we started really having problems. And you now that is one of the town's priorities is to protect citizen safety. I don't know what it's going to take to get to that point, but I'm not sitting back and letting other stuff keep occurring. So I hope they come up with something good. Because okay, there you. are federal, state, and local laws. Okay, thank you, Jane. Protecting. Okay, Mike, want to go on again? Yeah. Um, page six. Um, 
just so you know, if you weren't aware, there was a fire up on uh, Delaware Road uh, that mutual aid was called in. Um, but nobody got, nobody was in the structure that her killed her. And they had some equipment that was got stuck and brakes that locked up on the, on the uh, ladder to the air brakes and froze. But um, Mike uh, Holden was up there, um, Mike Smith. Uh, did some clearings to help facilitate uh, the apparatus getting in there, but uh, just to let you know, there was a fire up there. Was it a garage, Mike? Or yeah, it was a, a, a fire right next to the house. Okay, there's some equipment in there, something to save somewhere. Else. Um, so uh, apparatus uh, under under paragraph sub paragraph E apparatus engine two remains out of service. Um, as of uh, this morning, I got an email from Chief Goyette um, that they did get an initial estimate on the repair of engine um, two, and they're looking at, uh, I don't have my phone on me. It's either 25 to 30 or 30 to 35,000 dollars to fix that. Um, I'd say high on the 35,000 dollar end. Um, and we're not even sure if the vehicle is really worth that much money. So, um, I'll, I'll get more information. I'll share it with you. But he did follow up like he was asked to. He did get um, an estimate from a uh, organization or a grant that he brought, certified that certified to do this type of work. That's the fix the frame, Mike. On it, yeah, just to be specific. Yeah. They got they they want to take it down and check the frame and over more and that kind of stuff. But anyway, we he's I just wanted to let you know he's followed through with what he was asked to do. Sure. Um, and now it's just making that assessment and coming back to the board, let the board know what, the, what they want to do, or at least to the, the committee. The public safety committee. Um, any no questions? I'm going to move on. Page seven. We already know, we already talked about the informational meeting um, on the 21st at six o'clock here. Um, this, uh, the New England PBA stuff, without getting any, any real details, um, I've, I haven't been able to reach out or get a response back from the rep there. So I did talk to uh, the chief and I talked to Justin, um, chief today, Justin, Saturday, late Saturday night. Um, he was gonna, Justin's gonna reach out to him. I said, maybe I have a bad email. Um, so he's in the fall, so I'm gonna try to get a, Solicit a couple of dates from them so we can start kicking off the negotiations um, for the renegotiating the New England PDA contract with the police department. Public concerns. Well, Jan and Larry are here, so um, we heard from them. And I have one question on that. Yep. Um, <clears throat> you know, I just wanted to address before I showed Jim that letter. Of what they decision they had made on that dog, yeah. and that I hope that they take that into consideration and let me know what else I need to show you. The fact that the dog has not been muzzled, and that's part of the reason my dogs bark because that thing goes crazy next door, and then they bark because they're afraid that they're going to be attacked again, which has happened so many times. It's like they get there. So I will get you, let me know what you need, and I will supply that information. Thank you. But that may take care of part of the problem. Okay. I already did the Merrill band. Yeah. Um, Green Mountain Power. So I'm still waiting. I, I asked Karen to do something for me. Um, and I spilled castle on in it. Um, uh, to reach out to the medical or the health center um, to, to find out who I need to talk to um, about the, putting in the light bulb and cost sharing that. Um, and as of today, I, I didn't have any response back. So I continue to go on that. I, I did drive out here again tonight when it was, when it was dark and it, it is better out there. You can see a lot better. And then you guys know about the one on uh, Castle and Meadows. This is about the Castle and Meadows one. Um, that light was put in and installed. So uh, we did get a visit from the resident there thanking us for doing that. Well, I will say though that the entrance to the medical center always is better when there's no one there. Yeah. <laughs> so when, you know, it's three o'clock in the morning when you're driving a fire truck back and you're looking for that driveway, it's a lot easier, it's easier to find when there's snow on the ground. Um, but during the other nine months of the year, it's not so easy. Okay, what else do you have, Mike? That concludes minus the executive session. Um, and I'm not sure you got 
just so you know, Mr. Chairman, um, Chief Mantello has joined the meeting and whether or not there will be an executive session to discuss uh, labor relations contract. Um, he's, he's here just in case you guys decide to do that. I couldn't get back in touch with him earlier because I was able to get. Okay, to any, other, any other questions for Mike? If not, we'll move on to first disorders for approval. We have one here, Mike or Bob, want me to give that to you? Oh, okay. <laughs> To make a motion to approve purchase order number 048031 to Acrotech Environmental for the total of $2,775. And it is for? You read that one right now. Uh, read that one there. Permit required two species wet test. State permit required. State, state permit required. Two, two species wet test. I'll second it. And the second discussion of this purchase order. What is the two species wet test? It tells you on that second page. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not yet. Uh, uh, I think Jim does probably. What's, what's the first word of the company name? Aquatech, A Q U A T E C. Aquatech Environmental, Environmental Incorporated. Thank you. You need this back then? You got it? Yeah. Okay. All those, in, all those in favor of the motion to approve the purchase order for Aquatech Environmental indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Now we move on to the warrants. Make a motion we approve warrant number 0214R for $650. Warrant 0214 for $82,550.88. Warrant 0210 for $5,701.33. Warrant 0203 for $23,530.52. Warrant 0127 for $10,592.65. Warrant 0210P for $16,132.21. Warrant 0203P for $16,688.54. And warrant 0127P for $18,066.29. A second. A second. Discussion on the warrants. Hearing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay, I believe we have three other warrants here also. We'll make a motion for warrant number 0211P for $634.29. Number 0204P for $634.28. Number 0128P for $634.28. Second it. And second discussion. I recuse myself. You recuse yourself. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 And Dick recuses himself. Here you go, Bob. Mm
Thanks. Okay, moving on to select board comments and or concerns. Bob? I want to correct um, Tim Gilbert's statement back on January 10th where he said the district surcharge increase is only going to total $667. I believe is referring to just the castles and transportation. It's actually going to increase the district surcharge $1,050 to $1,150. That's the first thing. Um, I want to ask our district rep just for the next meeting if he can get the reasoning for the district surcharge increase. If you can get an answer to that, Mike, that would be very helpful. That's all I have. Okay, Mike. Okay. You're good. Nick. You're good. Joe. I'm good. Okay, I'm good. <clears throat> Brief recap items for follow up. Do we have anything to recap for follow up? No, no, no. How are we coming on the? Yep. Okay. On the parking ride out there, Mike. Is there any progress on that? Yeah, the company's going to send us uh, uh, one controller. So they can go up and um, employers can go up there and test it and he'll use it on all of them. Okay, we'll figure out if it's uh, controllers or batteries. We know that we we pretty much know what it is, but yeah. Okay. okay. The guardrails up on uh, Drake Road. Uh, talked to Chris about that. I talked to him um, a couple weeks ago. It's on the schedule for getting a hold of Lafayette to get them down here to uh, to do it, knowing that they have to town. The crew has to remove the old stuff and the cables and stuff, so they're, they're, they're tracking on it. I forgot to mention the select board comments and concerns. Uh, a lot of dead trees on the side of our roads, I've noticed. There's one up on uh, Sand Hill Road. I just can't believe I haven't dipped over yet. Uh, there's yeah. trees gone three quarters of the way through it. And... Yeah, that was that one's been reported. Oh, it has? Yeah, Bob Ward went up and looked at it. Uh, okay. so That's one that I noticed. There's a, there's a few others around town. That, I got a call from a concerned resident about the same tree. Okay. It's, it'd be interesting to go look at it because the way they did the woodpecker, it looks just like an owl. It's got a nose that comes down and it could be it's pretty cool. You want to go look at it before they take it down. Right. That's, that's, that's it. Yeah. Anyone else for recap? If not, um, do we wish to deal with the negotiations between the town? and the New England Police Benevolent Association this evening. Uh, Joe and uh, Mike, what are your thoughts on this? I'd rather wait until Joe's back here, if, we, if you don't mind, Joe's good to that. Well, I, I'm happy to uh, have that conversation, at least uh, for starters this evening. Um, I've got some thoughts. Okay. Let me get the ball rolling. Okay. Would um, somebody, therefore, like to make a motion to go into executive session with the town manager and the police chief? Uh, I will make a motion that we go into executive session for labor relations and contracts with the town manager and the police chief and the select board at uh, 8.30. I'll second that. Second. Any discussion? Not all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Executive session. Also, um, I'll have to catch up with you um, after uh, the meeting tomorrow or something, or I'll have Karen follow up with you. Okay, yeah, she sends me the recording, so just make sure it's recorded when you come out as well. Will do. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Have a good night. Thank you. Thanks. Good night. Thank you. Okay.
Make a motion that we come out of the executive session mm -hmm. at 8.47 with no action taken. Is there a second? I'll second it. And a second. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Is there another motion? Do we need any more executive session? Yep. Yeah, we do, don't we? Well, that would be for personnel. Yeah. We'll make a motion that we go into executive session with the board and the town manager only at 848. Is there a second? A second. Personnel. For personnel. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 We're in executive session personnel with the town manager. Go Thanks, ahead. Peter. Mike, can we Make a motion. We come out of the executive session with no action taken at 9.07. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Is there another motion? We'll make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? 